Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week, what happens when you use one voice coil in a dual voice coil subwoofer? This is a Sundown Audio X8V3. We've got a coil on this side, a coil on this side, and I've got it currently wired in series because I'm going to take the parameters from this sub using both coils in series, which is the standard way to measure these, and then I'm going to take measurements using only one coil. I'll put those on the screen, compare, and explain what is different and why, and then we're going to take this sub, put it in an enclosure in a car, and test it with both coils and one coil so you can see the actual effects in the car. So here we've got the specs of in series and the single coil. On the left we have it in series, on the right we have single coil. It is a dual 2 ohm, and something I should note is this sub has no play on it whatsoever. That's why the FS is so high. Uh, so things that will be common, FS, um, the suspension did not change running one coil or the other. So impedance is obviously going to be double or near it uh, as a result of being in series. FS is the same. The QES is the electrical Q. Now this is going to be much lower with it in series because we have both coils connected. That's going to bring the QTS down because we have more BL because both coils are connected. We're generating an electrical field that is much stronger using both coils versus one coil. So over here, QTS is going to be double or just a hair over double. That's going to be the case every time you use one coil versus two. The QTS will always be double. The QMS is the mechanical Q. You can see it's almost identical because nothing mechanical changed, only electrical. We can look at the inductance. Uh, inductance is going to be relative to the RE, which is the resistance. Um, ideally, you want to have um, the RE or lower. In this case, we do in both cases. The suspension, as you can see, between uh, 3.8 and 3.87, uh, that didn't change because, again, we didn't change anything with the suspension. The BL, 17.5 and 7.6. Now, there is something to be said for the BL. You have to look at the impedance. Uh, you can't just say this is a wildly different number, um, so one is stronger, one's better. You have to look at the impedance. When we go back to the 3.88 and the 1.8, um, if you take the BL squared divided by RE, that gives you a comparison that's equal across all impedances, and there's a 137% difference in motor strength with both coils. So we're over double the motor strength having both coils. When you look at this, it may not make a whole lot of sense, but if you think about it, when you have one coil connected, you have added mass from the other coil that has nothing going on. There's gonna be some thermal properties where it's not going to cool the same, uh, but also it's just added mass that is completely unnecessary for that one coil that's there. Your power handling will also be cut in half. When you have a dual voice coil and you have a power rating of say, 750 watts, that gets cut in half because you're only using one coil. The 750 is on both coils. So that is also a consideration. And your actual thermal capability may be slightly less than that as a result of how it's going to dissipate, whether that's going to transfer through the other coil or just be absorbed and insulate. That's something that could be tested, uh, but it's not something I'll be covering in this. And then also sensitivity. 80.6, 76.5. So there's four dB difference in sensitivity. Uh, and that again goes back to the BL being less than half, the overall motor strength being a 137% difference. That's over double, which would be 3 dB. Double would be 3 dB. And then an extra 37% is your other dB. So the math works out there. 
So we're gonna put this sub in the enclosure and get to testing on our meter in a car. So here is the setup. We've got our single X8 V3 installed on our America 12K. Don't worry, we're not gonna make 14K on this sub right now. We are going to go to 750 watts since that's what we're rated for RMS, just to kind of keep things on a fair playing field of how you would use this. So this is our setup. Sensor is on the windshield for reference. Uh, not that it has any pertinence to what's changing here, but that will be a constant since it is stuck there in the same spot and will not move. And we're going to meter this with one coil and both coils. And I'll also remind you to hit subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, uh, you can comment that below. This one actually came from a user comment in a video. So without further ado, here's our setup. And we are going to meter both ways and discuss what happened. We're starting with both coils connected. This should give us the best result. We are starting at 62 hertz, as I know that is the peak for this already. And then we're going to check above and below that frequency and see what kind of variance we get. So starting off with 62 hertz. So we're going to go down to 61 hertz and see how much it's affected. So we lost a uh, few tenths. Beans is just a little bit higher. Uh, there might be another tenth in that. If we get closer to 750, we'll give that another shot. All right, so I went just a hair over there, but basically the same result. So let's try going to 63 hertz. All right, so uh, I went just a hair over on that one. And again, we're down a few more tenths. Uh, and our impedances also go down to 2.5, um, which is expected. It's not as efficient, so impedance rise is not quite as high. Uh, so we lost, you know, uh, 0.5 or so, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 on the, the top side of that, 0 0.2 on the bottom side of that. So now we're going to disconnect one coil and run one coil doing the same tests and again, I will find the peak frequency, which may change. Uh, so I will do that beforehand so we know where we're at. So now we're set up with one coil. And 62 hertz is still the peak. Uh, but we can see what kind of difference we have on the top and bottom end. Again, we're going to go to 750 watts. That means that I had to go up on the volume because impedance is going to be higher. So I went up uh, one or two volume clicks. Um, I think I went up two. Uh, so it might be very hard to dial in 750. It'll be on the bottom end of the roll. But here we'll go. All right, so 145.3. We're going to go down to 61. So 
So uh, I had to bump it up a little bit extra there, uh, trying to dial it in, uh, but it only gained one tenth. So we lost three tenths on that side to very similar. Now we're up 63. And we've lost quite a bit more on the top side. So the peak changed a little bit, not drastically, but it just changed a little bit. Uh, also, notable thing is we've lost quite a bit in SPL, going from two coils to one coil. So even though the if sensitivity was showing four dB different, uh, it was a little over a dB difference. Uh, in real world in the car, kind of furthering the point that the sensitivity doesn't matter on subs. Um, there's a lot more factors to it. It just, it really doesn't matter uh, when you're comparing those things. Uh, on paper, that would have been 4 dB. It obviously was not with the same exact sub, but only using one coil instead of two. So in consideration of how you're using it, uh, your actual power handling is cut in half, but as we've just displayed, your SPL is lower, um, even on the same exact power. Uh, impedance is obviously much higher, but we have no problem producing that power with this amp. Um, but we're going from uh, right at about two ohms uh, to four and a half on uh, on that one, and then 62. That you know, was going to be a little bit higher. So that is a consideration. Also, if you're only running one coil is uh, you have to be able to make that power uh, if you're going to do that anyway. So again, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to get updates every time we update a video or upload a new video. Make sure you hit a thumbs up, like this video, go back and watch all of them in the series in the Tech Stuff Tuesday. This is a continued series every week that we upload on Tuesday. If you have any suggestions or comments, put those below. Uh, any questions, put those below as well. We'll answer those as best we can, as quickly as we can. And I'll see you again on another Tech Stuff Tuesday.